episode brought to you by Global Rescue, there when you need us the most. At the juncture of the Hindu Kush, Karakoram, and Himalayan Mountains, the headwaters of the mighty Indus River begin their long journey to the distant ocean. The steep, jagged, unforgiving slopes of northern Pakistan are home to the rarely hunted Himalayan ibex. But the journey to the mountains has to begin near Islamabad. No, I have no partner in crime. I'm going with him and he's going to be my backup. This is going to be the backup of backups. I got the world best shot on my backup. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Hopefully you just kill him in his I tracks. saw all those rugged adventure shows and he never misses, let me tell you. It's unbelievable. I've never seen a better shot in my life. That's what TV's for. We don't miss them. Rugged ex- it's Rugged Expeditions, by the way. Rugged Expeditions? Yeah, yeah, it's close enough adventure. What did I say? Rugged uh, ex- Expectations. No, no, no. Rugged Expectations. Oh, yeah. We know those are bad expectations. All right, let's load up. I'm ready to go kill something. I'm tired of traveling. Let's go hunt. And we were promised that the drive into where we'd be hunting would only be 15 hours. Only 15 hours. Just getting out of town and so-called civilization was an adventure in itself. If it's not exciting enough being hunting here, riding in the car is about as thrilling as you can get. There are no rules. The lines on the roads are more guidelines than actual rules. And it's pretty much every man for himself. But luckily, our man driving is probably considered to be the Mario Andretti of Pakistan. So we're in good hands. yet? Are we there yet? I, I think we only have like 10 more hours to go. 10 or 11? We're not there yet. Being on the road for five hours, we were joined by an army escort. There's something a little unnerving about needing an army escort to get to your final destination. We would swap out army guys when we would come to a new area, you know, a new chief ran a certain spot. This is one of the 28 roadblocks we had to pass through to get to our destination. Once we got through there, it was back on the road again. Are we there yet? It's old Silk Road. That's the old Silk Road? Silk Road, yes. Before this, this new road. It was the This is good for the China. Day or night, we had the military leading the way through the choked streets of one small town after another. I'm sure had we not had the army, this trip would have gone from being 16, 17 hours to being about 28 hours. We 
we've stopped in this little village to pick up some supplies. We got some yak and yeah. that beef combo. We've got some chicken. We got a goat we're getting. The food should be fantastic. So, we're down here in the road, and of course there's none down here low, because they're Ibex, and Ibex don't live on the road. So they're right at, up at the very top, up in these columns up here, and there's two real Ibex. Are we there yet? 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 <laughs> wow, the end of a really long drive getting in here. We've come to this village, pretty good size one, sitting literally at the base of these mountains. You gotta like a hotel that's made out of stones. Check this out. This is a lot of work right here. We've got a cow in the front yard to protect us. Look at him. Oh man, this is awesome. Love being in Pakistan, love the food, love the people. <laughs> Aside from all the rumors you hear and all the things you think about places like this, it really is a great place and great people. You know, people around the world, when you get in the mountains, we're all the same people. We want to have a good life, we want to have family, have a good meal, make a living. That's what it's all about. We're staying right here in the village itself. They've got a guest house that they've set aside for us. It's all carpeted inside. Nice big area. We got a stove to keep us warm at night. Should be awesome. This is Pakistan's answer to the Iron Chef. Only you're kind of like the aluminum chef. It seemed like everybody in the village came out in force the first night we got there to welcome us to their humble abode. You're on the outside? After the party and everybody had left, Alan decided to take me on in a little game of no, no, What kind of game is this you're playing? These are your two columns, these are my two. The next morning, I called home on my Explorer satellite phone just to check in and hear some friendly voices. Yeah. Yeah, good. While I was calling, the guys had spotted a really big billy way, way up high, living in the jagged cliffs above the village. And now we needed to make a plan on how the hell we were going to approach him. Early in the morning, 3 o'clock, we start from the head corner. We start slowly, 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 and we will go on that corner and we'll go up there. So, it, yes. So come across to this plateau? And we'll go over there. So we'll get there at least seven o'clock we will reach there. So you think this wind will stay consistent yes. like this? Morning, uh, early in the morning, the wind direction goes to inside the valley. Yeah. So. Up that glacier? Yeah. So if we side here like this, then we'll, they won't smell us up on the top. Yes. This mountain looks uh, not that high from here, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm getting the feeling that it's not going to be pretty in the morning. Yeah, we'll go slowly. Slowly, slowly. In the it's dark? Not so high. In so the dark. At least, uh, Can we use headlamps? Yeah. 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 Won't scare them. You no, they'll no, be on the other side. They, they are on the side. Oh, oh, I see. So where are we thinking? That flat plateau, that's where we'll crest over? Yeah. And they will come to the same spot. Same feet, spot feet. So we'll be on the right, hopefully. And then what do you? What's the plan? Like just wait for them to come back wait out. Wait for them and to come back because come we exactly know uh, the route that they will take to go to their feeding area, and then uh, hopefully you'll take a shot from there. Beautiful. Just like that, it's that easy. 
Yeah. No problem. No hope problem. So. <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> Famous last words. Say inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> inshallah. God willing. The altitude gets to you. No matter how good a shape you're in, 12,000 feet is a long, long way up. Especially for a guy who lives at sea level. Shoot from that rock over there. You think they're gonna come up through yeah. here? Yeah. You see the gap over there? Yeah. You think they're gonna come from there? Through this first gap? Yeah. Well, that'd be nice. Yeah. Oh, okay. right, in, right in the ridge, ridge. Yeah, yeah. Females are coming up. Yeah, two females. Congratulations. <laughs> That's a very nice, nice time, Excel. Very good shot. Very good shot. No sense in getting him. Yeah. We got him. No we sense in getting him on the first one. We got Let's him. make it sporty and make him run away. <laughs> Woo! It's a very nice time, Very Excel. nice. Congratulations. That is congratulations. Wonderful. Very nice shot. After the second <laughs> shot, I started freaking. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh, what's going on? You deserved it. Well, thank you for having us up here thank in Pakistan, you. man. This is incredible. What a great place. Thank you very much. Look at us thank up you. here. Up at the top of the mountain. What a place. All right. We climbed all the way up here. Let's go see. Yeah, let's go see him. Yes! Four shots. Oh. Unbelievable, the feeling of getting up on the top of these mountains after a unique species like this. The Himalayan Ibex. Wow, who'd have thought? We are lucky guys to get to come to places like this and go hunt after a unique species like this. <laughs> Holy smokes. Look at this. Himalayan Ibex. I can't believe how big the body is on these things. Whoa. I mean, they're Stay there, baby. They're just incredible. Look at the horns on this. That is what we came all the way to Pakistan for right there. Look at that, huh? The Himalayan Ibex up here in the Karakoram Mountains of northern Pakistan. We're right in the corner of where Afghanistan, Pakistan, and China all come together up here, up at the headwaters of the Indus River. One of those exotic places that I've read about my whole life. You know, the explorers came through here, the Silk Road came right through this valley below us. And now here we are chasing one of the most elusive ibex that there is. Definitely one of the hardest ones to collect for sure. But the mass on these things, I mean, 
They may not get as long as some of the other Ibex. This is a really good one, but the mass that you get down here and these great knobs that they get all along here, these bumps that they get on the front from fighting. This is an old, old Billy. You can see he's just about done. He's got chips on his horns and look at the tips. Still had him, he's got a really nice flare to him. But what a great trophy. Himalayan Ibex in Pakistan. Doesn't get any better than this. Rugged X! Woo! X. X. X, the Rugged X. Yeah, even in Pakistan they know the X. <laughs> No, it died on the last bullet I had in my, in my <laughs> gun. You want to talk about something? I, I'm proud of you. I'm really proud. I got the world best shot on my backup. The world best shot, best shot, best shot. When we finally made it off the mountain, got back to the village, what do you know? It's party time Pakistan style. you're thinking some people should not be allowed to dance in public. What a trip, what a place, what super people to spend time in the mountains with. I can't wait. So I get a chance to get back to Pakistan and see what the next mountain has to hold.